Hi, this is Susan Bonner, and we're going to talk about doing digital painting for creature design. I really start by doing a drawing on a new layer that's in black, and uh, that's done over top of my blue line. I've already done quite a bit of uh, altering to the first drawing that was inspired by uh, my son's drawing, the healer, and uh, now I'm just adjusting my drawing. So white fill is one of the most important areas that, that I use, and so you can see I've done an action here, which uh, I have the button mode on, and I click on white fill, and it really fills it in immediately, and that's really fantastic. Uh, so I have a layer for flats and a layer for draw, and I have duplicated that layer. That helps me to make sure that I keep my drawing separate than the flats. In hue adjustments, I have changed this completely to white, which is the flat. So sometimes the selections that the white fill does in that action doesn't get everything or gets too much like the center area. So I make a selection and then I can delete that out of that fill layer. And I check that to see if the flats and the draw are truly separate. You wanna have those be separate layers. Uh, and now I can go about creating the color fill by making selections uh, it can be re really messy on the outside, but on the inside you want it to be a little bit more clean. I'm using the lasso uh, selector. And uh, just by clicking off, uh, I can get it. I need to get a little bit more around the ear here, so I'm uh, hitting shift, which helps me to add to the selection. Uh, command, or if I'm holding it down and I'm doing um, alt, it will uh, give me the minus. So plus um, is shift and alt is minus. So after I've got that selection, I can then go to that flat layer and I first start by darkening it. I go to colorize and I click it uh, and change the hue and the saturation to meet my needs. So um, that is with hue shift, uh, which the shortcut for that is command U. So I'm just gonna go through this uh, uh, changing each one of the sections uh, using my selections and then uh, doing the hue sat, which is command or control uh, U to give me the color shift. All right, so that method's really cool. Uh, it is a way to get a really good flats, but I also uh, use it when I'm going to be doing full on digital painting, which is what we're doing right here. Ultimately, I may get rid of all of the lines, and that is uh, definitely one style that you can work in. This piece was inspired by uh, coronavirus and uh, wanting to have a healer. My son, Dylan, did the initial drawing on the right, and this is my version of the digital painting on the left. And uh, so we're really giving a character that can uh, go and conquer uh, COVID-19 with his bludgeoning uh, mace there. So you can see right now I'm really working with all different colors. I, I like for my flats to have different colors for each section. And then I work uh, with, I also work with all of those on one layer. That's important to know. I'm able to do this painting in because I have selections right now. Um, you can you can also um, have you can paint on the area that is your layer by hitting the what looks like the Purina Chow Hound uh, lock fill on top of your layers. I'm actually not doing that right now, but that is an option for you to do. Um, um, I like to go from the outsides in so that I don't spend a lot of time doing too many details. That's pretty important. 
So you see if you do uh, color fills, you're going to get some of those little white lines and you can you can paint the edges of those later. You can see right now I've got my paintbrush. It's a Bonner cleanup brush. And I'm just going in along the edges of that and that's helping to clean up that area. After you have the outside areas filled, you can uh, with with your color fill, you can use the uh, the paint bucket like I'm doing right now uh, to fill new areas. Uh, it doesn't work when you have uh, it all white because it's just going to fill everything. So you really want to just uh, use that uh, when when you have areas that uh, are inside of other color areas. That's the way that it works. Saving, uh, I want to remind you guys to save your files. All right, so after I have all of my color in there, the next thing that I'm going to do is to work with some values. And you don't have to have it where you have to paint each value and it has to be all different um, paint tones and on all different layers. Uh, the method that I use is to use the selections. So I'm gonna find what I think is going to be the dark side. So I'm just selecting all of these bottom parts. I'm using the cowboy lasso and uh, finding underneath his chin and anywhere else that I think is going to be dark. So on the side of his face and his ear. So my light is coming from the upper right. So I'm finding all the dark sides. Now that I have those selected, I'm also hitting shift to add to any of these selections. Um, so I'm trying to decide right now uh, what is the dark. Then I'm going to make a new adjustment layer, which is going to be a curves layer. And that curves layer, I'm going to bring it up, is uh, darkening the edges. And you see if I click on this little icon on the bottom left, uh, I will be able to attach it to the previous clipping mask. And that darkens it. And it's because it's on top of what is the flats. So the next thing that I do is I make sure that my darkened areas are accurate. So I go around and I um, paint with white inside of this black area, which is my mask. The mask is what's created when you create uh, that clipping mask uh, using the values. Uh, so I can go in and make some more accurate ones. I can adjust my paintbrush by hitting the brackets next to the O and P on your keyboard. Bracket down makes the, key, the paintbrush smaller and the bracket up makes the paintbrush brush bigger. And this gives me more accuracy for that. So the nice thing about this is that you can turn this on and off on those layers and then we can always adjust that curve to make them darker or lighter as, as needed. Uh, it's not directly applied to the paint. All right, give it a try. At this point, I have a new layer which I have and add on top. I usually call it paint. This is a layer that I pick from, which the shortcut for is I. I pick from the color that I'm working with and I sometimes make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, and then I paint. Um, I like to use Jason's Nice Brush and I, uh, it's a pretty soft brush, and I go in and I paint more details. So because I have that, uh, darks and lights un underneath, I'm able to go in and do more details. So this is really about finding more darks and lights and giving more information for uh, where, where uh, shadows underneath uh, specific areas would be. Now I'm into the, into the hair and just looking for the highlights there. So this is, this is the part that takes a lot of time. Uh, and if you're going to go for more detail, you're, you can just keep on pushing it as far as you'd like to go.
So I'm going to bring in some textures. I went to textures.com and I grabbed some textures. The first one that I want to explore is the striped one. Um, and I'm going to try to put it up at that top part right there. I'm going to hit Command T um, and then hit Warp. I'm going to try to warp these stripes as if it was actually on the, the piece. And if I need to, I can go in and click liquefy, but I think that this is probably going to work. Really like that part of it, so I'm going to try to get that to go into it. Now, I haven't done the paste into yet, uh, so that's a whole other part of it. That I'll be working on. It's looking pretty good to me um, as a little catch. I like that. So I'm going to hit return and that will transform it. Um, but what I've got to do is make a selection of where the patch is going to live. And shift click that. Um, so with that, I can make a mask by clicking that. Um, then I'm going to click on color burn looks pretty good to me for the So now we're just finishing it out. There's a lot of things that need to be done, like darkening and finding more highlights and finding the hierarchy in the piece by making us look at where we need to look at. I also add a background and uh, more information like the cement area. So for you, uh, you need to find ways to complete your project. And I hope that uh, what I did here was helpful for you. Mm -hmm.